Hey there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to make this really fun Mardi Gras mask using supplies from our sponsor, Paper Mart. You can find them online at www.papermart.com. They have these really fun feathers, rhinestones, ribbons, and lots of great stuff to let the good times roll. Or as they say in the Big Easy, les les bon temps brûlé. Doesn't this just look like fun? Look at all the sparkling stuff I have on my table. Oh, I'm so looking forward to making this um, awesome Mardi Gras mask. So what I've done ahead of time is I have cut out um, a mask and also a mat. So basically what I did was I used um, an SVG template that I designed. It's called Masquerade Mask and it's available at mygraphico.com if you're interested. And it's a three-dimensional mask. So you've got, um, you've got the mask and the nose here. And then what I did was I just grabbed some glitter cardstock. This is by Coordinations, and I cut a mat. I did it on my die cutter, but you could use a printable template and just cut around it. It's um, it's very easy. And so there, when it layers up, it's going to be really fun. I'm going to set the nose aside for now because uh, you don't want to put that on until you're all done, or it's just going to kind of get in the way. So what I want to do first is simply center this on my mat and glue it down. I am using hot glue. If you're going to do this project with kids though, why don't you use some tacky glue? And that way you don't have to worry about anybody getting burned. Um, I like the Aileen's tacky glue and what I usually do is I will, if I'm using that, I'll have a jar handy and I'll put it a tip down in the jar to make sure the glue is always ready to go so you're not in, you know, waiting around uh, for the glue. That's just a wonderful tip. Also I store it like that too. I have it, one of those uh, over-the-door shoe holders and I have my, the, my Aileen's tacky glue nozzle down in one of those um, one of those pockets so it's always ready to go when I am. So there, and the reason I'm matting this is just to make it a little bit more sturdy. You're going to need a barbecue skewer or a short dowel and um, we're going to make sure that the point is going to be adhered to the back of our mask up here at the top so no one's going to poke themselves. And I've got this pretty uh, gold lame ribbon from Paper Mart and I love their ribbon. Every spool of ribbon that I have is just so nice. Even this is like a, a lame, which they're usually so scratchy and stiff. This is really supple and really easily to, easy to mold. I'm going to show you as I wrap this stick with it. So what I'm going to do is start by adding a little bit of hot glue to the tip. Again, you can use tacky glue. Or you could even start it with a little bit of tape to make it kind of easy for the little ones. Now I have done this project um, in art camps um, that I've taught. I've done it in classrooms. I have... Um, done it for birthday party activities and it's just such a fun um, such a fun project and you really don't need any special training to do this everyone can make them all these masks are going to be pretty you can't go wrong with with glitter and sequins and um, rhinestones it's just it's just a lot of fun and then I'm just gonna snip this I don't have my ribbon scissors here but I'm hoping these cutter bees are gonna be fine lame ribbon is very easy to cut now I'm going to add a couple more strands of this because I think it's pretty to kind of have a few ribbon strands hanging down. I'm just going to cut them on an angle, nothing fancy here. I'll probably do um, one length that's a little bit longer just to kind of add a little variety to the design. It'll make it look a little bit prettier that they're not all the same length. You could do a, a fairy wand if you're making a costume this exact same way. And I'm just going to add a little more glue to the end. My glue gun, my outlet here where I film my videos is to my left. And it's not close enough that I can drag the glue gun to my right side. So I kind of have to kind of awkwardly reach over every time I want to glue something down. Just one more dab of glue on there. I'm just going to add that one right. I can see the stick peeking out there. I want to cover that up. So I'm going to add this last piece right in there. I'm using low temperature glue and I am working in my cold studio and it still gives me enough working time. So, you know, I I generally use low temperature most of the time. So there, I've got the stick covered with a little bit of trail of ribbon, which is really pretty. So here we're going to decorate the mask and the thing I really love using is feathers for this because it adds so much bulk and so much wow without adding a lot of um, a lot of weight, which is nice because this is just cardstock, so we don't want to put too much weight on it. So here I have um, these beautiful orchid colored feathers. They're they're very they're very nice for the uh, Mardi Gras the Mardi Gras theme. And I've also got some green, and these are packaged so nicely because usually when you buy a package of feathers, you pull out one feather and the entire package comes out in a big whoof, 
and then you're like picking out feathers for the next three days. So this is nice because they, you can keep them, you can store actually store them in the package they come in and it's so nice to be able to get a whole package of one color and they're like a buck or a buck fifty a package are super cheap. So very, very nice to work with. And one package could really give you a classroom cla uh, a classroom worth of feathers. And I think I'm just going to do like a, a puff of feathers on one side or maybe in the middle. Oh boy, they look good in the middle too, don't they? Well, you know what? I'm just going to flip it upside down and start gluing feathers down. Oh, they're so pretty. It's going to be, I can, they're cheap enough that I can fill the whole mask with feathers if I want to. I love that. I, I don't like it when I am using ex really expensive supplies and then I have to kind of conserve and worry about using them up. But then again, I also don't like working with cheap supplies. I like to work with good quality stuff. And that's what I love about Paper Mart is their, their stuff's affordable. It's great for a teacher like me because I tend to go through a lot of things, but I don't have to, I don't have to worry about pinching my pennies because I know I'm going to get good quality stuff. And um, it comes in large amounts, so it's just ideal for, for the way I roll. Okay, I thought about sandwiching the feathers in between the two layers of cardstock, but... Um, but I really love the just like hint of gold glitter that this uh, cardstock has. So I decided to do that there. That seems they seem to be on pretty good. I think I'm going to get a little bit more glue behind this this uh, orchid one here because it wants to it wants to kind of go backwards on me a little bit. So I'm just going to try to sneak my glue back there without having it splop out the front. Splops another technical term, folks. All right. So now we get to do the fun part, and I've got all these lovely rhinestones from Paper Mart. But before I do that, I think I want to go in with some gold metallic and green and purple metallic markers and um, add some kind of flourishes and just some decoration to this. And these are the opaque, uh, opaque sticks by Marva Uchida. And they come in a pack of six. And they're pretty affordable. My kids love using these because they show up on dark paper and that's just something you don't normally get with markers. You can see these are also water-based, um, so you don't really need to shake them up. I, I'm just so used to whenever I use any opaque markers to shake them up, but they will, um, they're water-based. They don't need to be shaken up. You do need to store them tip down. Well, I usually store my markers horizontally, so before I get ready to use these, I stick them in a jar tip down so that I know they'll be ready to go. You just need to have that ink ready to, ready to flow. And look how nice that shows up. Isn't that pretty? And you can see how easily this project comes together. And you don't have to, uh, you don't have to be an artist. You could just simply kind of make it up as you go along. I am making it up as I go along, folks. Big surprise there, huh? All right. And I'm just going to add some more dots. Dots are just a really um, easy design element that anyone can add. You know, repetition, that's what we're doing here. Rhythm and repetition is what we have. And everything matches because we're doing the same type of shapes over and over again. But they're, we're changing them up a little bit, so they add interest. So if you're an art teacher, um, you can kind of teach some design elements along with this which is always nice. All oh, right, now I'm gonna throw some rhinestones in. Uh, I got some sequins here too, so I've got lots of options. And um, I am using a hot glue gun. This does take a little bit of a um, little bit of finesse, but asbestos hands over here can handle using the hot glue gun on these tiny little things. Um, do as I say, don't, <laughs> don't do as I do. I don't think I recommend this, but, uh, but it's, it's how I roll. I like to uh, potentially burn myself with every project that I undertake. Ironically, though, I only seem to burn myself when I'm cooking. I seem to be uh, fine wielding torches and um, and whatnot. You can see I got a little glue overspill there. I'm just going to cover that up with a little marker here. There we go. And let's see. I think I'll just lay out my rhinestones before I glue them down. I have the assorted rhinestone packages here from Paper Mart. They're a dollar package. They come in three sizes. Um, these are the large size. And um, they're really good for jewelry because they are small, small, medium, and large, but even the large is kind of small, so it's really more suited for doing some jewelry or some small decor projects. And I may actually have to cave and switch over to the, um, to the glue pen because I am getting, I'm kind of messy with my glue today. 
uh, glue dots would work really good, like glue dot minis, which I believe you can also find at papermart.com in bulk boxes, which are great for art teachers because you go through a lot of them and you don't want to pay scrapbook store prices when you're using that many of them. I completely understand. Because when you're working with kids, you don't want to say, no, 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 don't use that. You know, you want to let them be free with their creating. Uh, but you also have to keep a budget in mind, especially if you're working um, in a school. And I really like the way these gold and the purple look. I don't know if I'm crazy. I don't think I'm crazy about the green. I think I like the gold and the purple. Um, and I'm keeping this area fairly flat because I'm going to, I think I'm going to use that nose part. Um, I could omit it, but I think that it would look really pretty to have that on there. I really like those gold. Those gold look really nice. Gold, purple, and green are the uh, quintessential Mardi Gras colors. All right. I think that's good. And maybe I'll put a couple, a couple sequins in. Dig through my sequin jar here. See what I can... Maybe I'll use green sequins because I don't have a lot of green going on here. Put a green maybe on each side there. I like to kind of move them around and play with it until I until I have the right uh, position. And I think that I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, glue these down. Okay, there we go. These are all glued down. Now I have a lot of hot glue strings that you can probably see in the video. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over to the other side of the room where my heat gun lives, and I'm going to blast it with a heat gun for about 10 seconds, and that's going to make all these glue strings disappear. So I'll be right back. There we go. If you find you have a hard time with um, your hot glue stringing, it could be because you live in a warm climate. Your glue will be a lot stringier the warmer your room temperature is. Uh, I work in my basement, so it's always a bit ch uh, chillier, and I don't have that much of a problem with strings. So now I want to adhere the, um, the stick to the back of this. Since I'm right-handed, I want to put this on the right side of my mask. If you're left-handed, you might want it on the left side, or you might just prefer to hold it with your left hand. Whichever you prefer, there's, um, it doesn't matter. You do whichever one you like. And I'm just going to add a, a line of hot glue, a pretty generous line. And then I'm going to stick the tip here. Remember, we put the pointy tip, pointy side up, and I'm just going to kind of roll it in the glue, and I'm going to hold it down as it cools. Make sure you get it exactly the way you want it because once it's dry it's going to be stuck on there really well. Now for the nose, I've cut this piece out. Now you don't need to do the nose, I just think it's kind of fun. So it comes like this. So you want to score it up the middle and score it right here at the inch mark where it's where the, you can see a bend where it goes from, goes from uh, straight to curving. So it's scored here and it's scored there. Then you make a little snip between um, from the scored line up to that first fold. And then you just fold it. Let's see, can you see that? You just kind of fold it in half so the back almost looks like a diamond. It looks just like a diamond, actually. So then you're going to do a little bit of glue right there. And you're going to close that up, wipe off any uh, glue. Of course, asbestos hands here. I can do that with my bare hands. And then what I like to do so it doesn't hang down below the nose area on the mask is I'm just going to uh, trim it straight across. Now this pad here is going to give us a nice area to adhere it to our mask. All right, that uh, that stick is cooled off there because remember we're using the um, the low temp glue and I'm just going to glue that right on there. Now if I want, before I glue it down, actually I should have done this when it was <laughs> before I glued it, before I folded it, I can add some dots to make it kind of match the mask. I think maybe I'll do that. I can do that right here. Sure I can, because I don't really need to press too much to get the ink to flow, so I can go ahead and just add some dots. But yes, it would have been a lot easier to do had I done it before I before I folded it. There you go, live and learn, do as I say, not as I do. And I'm going to put a little bit of glue here on this um, the kind of triangle area at the back of the nose. And I'm going to glue it down there. Okay, so we have got this fun three-dimensional mask. I want to thank you so much for watching today. I also want to thank Paper Mart. I'm telling you what, they've got the best feathers in town. Check them out online at www.papermart.com. Thank you so much for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting! Laissez la bon temps brûler!